We're here today because we have a team of people from Hong Kong and the UK who are looking at our basking shark, which we were lucky enough to acquire in 2015. A man named Ross Craig, skipper of a fishing vessel called the Castella Rosa, captured a basking shark and would have been easier to just dump it over the shore and you know get it out of his nets, but he offered it to the museum. That fish was 7.2 metres long, so way bigger than anything that we could store. So we kept the head and we kept all the fins and we got tissue samples and we got some vertebrae and a decision was made to 3D scan it. At the end of that day, after it was 3D scanned, it was put back into a big two metre tank and it's been in 70% ethanol preservative since that time. And it was fantastic to see it coming out today and looking in really good order. I'm a professor at City University of Hong Kong. We traveled all the way to Melbourne to look at a big shark head. It's a unique specimen. It's the only one in the world, as far as we know, that's been laser scanned. And the only time that anyone has been able to capture the anatomy in 3D of a shark like this. We're interested in understanding how the animal feeds and what its anatomy does as it's feeding. We need to know what it's like when it's not in its feeding position. And so we needed to come back and scan it with its mouth closed. That allows us to look at how the pieces of the skeleton, pieces of the skin deform as the animal is undergoing this massive change as it's feeding. Most sharks are carnivores that use their teeth to grab or tear apart prey. Basking sharks and mega mouth sharks and whale sharks are all filter feeders. So they strain the food out of the water. It's a hard way to make a living. They eat very small things, but they're some of the biggest fish in the ocean. But oddly, we don't know much about how the filtering actually works. It's impossible to study in the wild because the animal's so big and it's moving so fast as it's feeding. So we need specimens like this in order to examine. You know, we got this giant head. We had no idea what anybody would want to do with it. And so it's fantastic to have people come here and actually do research on it. You know, and we learned heaps today. Yeah, there's someone in a line. We discovered some, some little features today that we're not sure what they are. They're small, black, apparently mineralized structures on the skin, seem to be organized in a pattern running down the body, but as far as we know, no one's seen them before. So being able to access a specimen like this is the only way you could find these, especially because specimens are rare and the animal's sight is protected, so it's a threatened species. So we have to rely on specimens like this to, to learn something about the animal's biology. You know, we've got lots and lots of specimens in our collection. They can all tell a story. And what, one of the things I really love about this, even though the shark was caught and died back in 2015, to me, in a sense, the collections are a living collection because their stories can live on into the future and people can find out new things about them.